We will um, <coughs> be discussing most of the things that came in your packet. Um, we, the Raven building and uh, a few other things. We put back the ENDS reports till October um, just because things were not ready to be discussed until then. So um, ENDS reports will not be either in August or September this year, but in October. Um, so do we have someone who's willing to be the meeting evaluator? Anyone who hasn't done it well? Um, we don't have a public for public comment, so um, we will move on. Board management and governance. Um, so the norms review as the first meeting of sort of the new school year, I just wanted to go over a few issues. Um, for our board. Um, first is um, attendance, which we are doing very well um, with a smaller board. We're, we're doing much better with attendance lately, so that's great. Um, preparation, um, everyone should have uh, uh, read over and prepared, especially for the EL monitoring reports um, in, in preparation for the meeting so that we can have just prepared and collaborative discussions. Um, a new thing that I've been made aware of, uh, other boards are doing, is that they're um, saying no phone use during the meeting so that people are all um, attentive and um, engaged. Um, so if people would not, please look at their phones. That would be great. I don't think um, that's an issue, but I am on duty until 7 o'clock, so I need to be able to answer okay. pages until 7 o'clock, which I do on my phone. That's so. um, it just especially for people watching on the closed circuit TV. It's really helpful if everyone's attentive, engaged, and participatory. Lastly, um, committee work. Committee work is, is one of our requirements. Um, we are, you know, it's part of our job as a board member is to participate in committee work. Um, that uh, includes negotiation teams, and I do know that you know, we had a pretty marginal attendance um, on negotiation teams this past year. It really does hamper Lane's effectiveness and our effectiveness as community members and board members to be ears and eyes on those um, on those negotiation meetings. So it really does, it's part of the requirements of being a board member. So um, I would appreciate, I can't insist on it, but you know, just better engagement on all of our behalf on all of our parts um, this year as we're entering the new school year. We are going to have committee work. Um, besides, we have to renegotiate both contracts this year. Uh, we are going to be forming a committee tonight to, um, to review the policy review that was done by the BSBA. Um, we asked the BSBA to look over our policies um, in your report. I don't know. Did it come out in the... Um, I'm not sure if, if it was part of what you sent online. It, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. It's in yes. the packet. Uh, yeah. It's in the packet. Mm -hmm. um, but Sue Segliowski, something like that, um, we asked um, her from the DSBA to review our policies. And there are quite a number that need to be either revised or changed or amended. Mm -hmm. um, she is willing to meet with us. Meet with us. I asked her to our meeting. She's not available on the second Mondays, so she suggested we form a subcommittee. She's willing to come to Randolph and meet with the subcommittee. Um, that work, I don't think, will take um, too long. Um, she's excellent, and she'll mm -hmm. guide us through it. So further, as we review those, um, uh, uh, her report later in this meeting, we will form a subcommittee. Can I just ask a question? I thought, I know that we're responsible for these, but I didn't think that we did those as a board. That that was sort of, those are state Based ones on. that he needs to make sure that we're in, that we are aware of and that we're in compliance Some of with. them are. Some of them are his job. But as a board overseeing them, we need to. We have to, we have to do the wordsmithing for them? Not the wordsmithing. But we do have to 
you know, approve them and make sure. Yeah, sort of be the oversight and, and right. yeah, it's our job to meet with, you know, it's our job to have someone look at them um, and it's our job to, as I understand yeah, it. Yeah, so you, you, have, you have the responsibility for the general policies. Mm -hmm. How those get enacted in the school, it's kind of like the, the reports, right? I get to interpret how they're enacted and put the protocols in place to make sure that they're happening. But the actual policies themselves are, are the board's um, bailiwick. Um, you could you know, delegate it um, as well to me. And what I would do is I would go out and look, talk with Pietro, because most of them are probably pretty standard across the, the, the state in terms of what people are using. And I could bring them back to the board and you know, explain them, have people take a look, see if they want to modify them. That's my I option. think you, know, you could but, be part of that subcommittee. but. Um, and like some the of them are of federally mandated. Right. Obviously, right. those are easy. Yeah. It's it's right. more the things that apply directly to us. Or there's, you know, I don't think it's going to be a big job, but there are a number of things that, that we should be aware of, and we should right. be looking them over with, you know, the help of someone who knows more than we do. Yeah. And it, as you guys, it's it's kind of like why I like doing the EL reports. Um, they're they take a bit of time. Linda, Linda can laugh a little bit at me as I did when I worked on them, but. Um, it reminds me of everything, you know, having to go through them once a year and really put the thought in and think about them. Um, it's, it's a good, good exercise. All right, so as far as board norms, that is it. Annual agenda, if you want to walk us through that a little. Your name is on this. Annual agenda. Thanks. That's my fault. <laughs> Assigned um, him. I remember we talked about it, and I don't remember what we talked about. So we just, I think we moved. Oh, we were talking about for the community engagement. We were talking about moving, uh, removing some stuff. We looks like we did that. Keynote speaker. Yeah, we. There's definitely things we could. could well, that's. I think that's what Lane does now. The like you had the uh, Calvin uh, Terrell. Calvin Terrell. Yeah. That's that now, I assume, or it, that's not that's not the remnants from uh, what, three years ago when we had our own keynote speaker. That's your keynote speaker, yeah. right? Yeah. And then I mean, community events, though, I don't know that we. I mean, we definitely could January stay out. In February. I don't know if maybe we're talking about. Uh, planning for the town meetings and the, the meetings leading up to it, if that's what we're talking about, community events? Well, it always says board observation of school events, and I think that's a remnant, because we don't do that anymore. Yeah, that's true. And that's part of if you guys, as a board, vote on this tonight, you know, that could be one of the things, is if we want to take that out. Mm -hmm. So, board observations. The other thing, we do need to take out um, is the report on RTCC meetings since we'll all we'll be at our meeting. yeah we'll all be, Which will be present. The next if and if you look at the very top, you know where it has the dates. Yeah. It uh, tells what dates those are. Um, I did confirm that with uh, with Jason. Jason. So he, he's on board. So one of the discussions that happened earlier this year is they weren't getting a lot of attendance at the RTCC um, meetings. A lot of it's, it's an advisory board, but it's important that it meets. This is the body that actually would finalize um, anything of policy or anything of substance that they would come up with anyway. So it kind of makes sense to maybe have the first hour of these meetings on those four days a year to actually have those meetings here. Um, will those be in October? No, it's no, going to be, no, you can see it on the top. September, November, yeah. November okay. February, and May. And then the other other big change was pushing the um, ENDS report to October. Um, a lot of that is just because it's when some of the data that we're using with the new reinterpretation is not available until uh, then. The VI VISBIT proxy, I thought that was uh, in uh, April no. or May. No, it's before the no. fall. Maybe it's before the fall. Yeah. So is it we elect the person? In yeah, you have to either say you're going to do it by proxy or somebody's going. To okay, so but so that's, that's, that's when it actually does. Yeah, so we have to put the the, the, um, the conference. Oh, right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
So if somebody want to update this and give it to me, and I'll. There was another thing. Yeah, you want to tell me that I'm taking notes. The policy governance training will move out of October, likely because of the you know much increased ends report that's going to take us time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Likely we'll do it in November, hopefully. I don't know. What, I have no idea how long the RTCC meetings will take. We have discussed with Jason is starting at 6. I don't know how other people feel about that, um, you know, making the RTC 6 to 6.45 or however long it takes. It's usually 45 minutes at the most. Mm -hmm. can, can people make a 6 o'clock meeting? Usually, yeah. Okay. So, you know, that usually was the RTCC time, the six. So if we made those meetings at six, we do RTCC first and then school board following, that might make it more manageable. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to discuss the superintendent contract, do we? No, not this year. Because we got two years. Yeah. Can I? Can I? Uh, number 11. Gotcha. The principal the state of the school's data is that part of the ends? Historically, it has been. I yeah. think that was uh, the elementary um, well, there's, yeah. there's principal's elementary, report. No, that, and then there's the data, data wall presentation. The elementaries come twice. The high school come twice. So maybe those are. But are we what, why are we having them do that? Those are Is it, reports. So that's part of our ends yeah. reporting. Right. It's historically, it has been. I mean, if right. part of that, the discussion in terms of the reports, you know, we talk about the executive limitations, is if there are other things that the board would like to see. Um, right. That's a board so board maybe decision. when we have our ends report time, which, is, can, which is in October, mm -hmm. we can say we'd like to know or, you know, we'd like to have an update on sort of where you are with reading or I don't know if there's something that shows up in the ends report from the previous year that oh, we're working on this. Because it seems like when we have have them come in, a lot of times they're spending time talking about, well, then we give them this test and it does this. But we're not getting how they did on the test. We're just getting the means. We're getting how they do it and what they use, which, I mean, maybe that that's sort of the rationale or the interpretation, but it's not any evidence of sort of where, they're, where the kids are at or what the benchmark is and why the you know, you know what I mean? It's just more this is how we do it. And it takes a lot of board time, it takes their time, and if we want it to be ends, we need to give them that. I haven't yeah. spoken up during the meeting because I, you know, they come prepared with what what they think we want to hear, but I'm just wondering, I don't want to hear about how they're doing what they're doing. Other people on the board might feel like they want to know how, but again, we're, not really deciding on how things are done. I don't have the expertise to say, well, you shouldn't be using that test. I want to know where are the kids at, how are they doing, where do you want them to be, and and are we getting there? And uh, at the elementary level, they can certainly do that. They have developed their form of assessments. They have two or three online tracking tools that they're using. Um, so they can easily do that report. I think this is just a holdover from historically from what they've right, done. Right, right, right. Um, and that's where that's why I'm yeah. questioning it. Do but, you well, still want to go through that? But that's that's the question for you for, the, to for us. I mean, these are two different things, right? The October is the is the high school, and they are reporting on last year's okay. those is that results. What this is? October. Right. That's October. The school. December is it's elementary. Elementary. Right. So, so then those are several different okay. right, groups. So of that teachers. would be the ends. They're, so they are going to focus on the ends right. there. But those test results, they're not positive. Not everything's going to be done ready before September. Right. They're not right. 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 going to have all those. So we moved it to October so that yeah. everything yeah. will be complete. Yeah, that's so fine. that's high school. And then RTCC did in June. 
and then the elementary is scheduled for December, December. and March, as I remember. And right. that ends report in October is kind of like the big written report, and then I give right. you the PowerPoint that kind of summarizes everything in the district. The, the Any big interpretations big. we try to do, or I try to do at the ends, and you know the objective data we use on the measure. And then the data, but the data wall, it seemed like to me the last time the, the I think the data wall came, is what you're talking was, about, yeah. Yeah, and Where they me, went on and on about all kinds of stuff, but um, it was yeah. more what you're talking about, but the more a lot of it's nice, right. but. Um, so I don't know if we want, or we need to give them some direction about what we want I think that's versus, um, you know. They have the data. It's a matter of the delivery of what, it's a matter of telling them what we want out of that information, because they, they have everything. They got everything. Right. They've got it, and they're, they're using it in their professional learning communities. So right. You're gonna see some, some good jumps in terms of the elementary scores when you get down to the entry point because of the But it just seemed like we got sort of mired. I mean, mm -hmm. and I, when I was you know, we had asked them without any real direction, so I was gonna say, hey, I don't, you know, this isn't really what we need because we've got to tell them what, what we want. To so just less about how and more about what are your results going for. And if, how is it going to determine your right your education going forward? Right? If um, folks are comfortable, what I can do is I'm happy to have the conversation and, and just have them focus on the results of their formative assessments and their internal assessments. Um, yeah, and, and not just you know, not just summative, but I think, you know, just teacher observation type yep. assessments as well, which. And I'll give you, and they've got enough, the high school is, is in progress because they had so much work on the, the mandatory, the report cards and the graduation proficiencies, but these guys have been doing it for two years now, so they only even have some trend data. And it takes two, three years to get a real trend, but you, you don't, you don't be able to see what they're doing. So if folks are comfortable, I'll, well, it is, that's sort of what they do in December, or, or is this a little bit digging deeper down in the one in March? Uh, in it can, December, it can, it can be, yeah. But just to be clear, so I hear, and I'm hopefully understanding you correctly, Lane, and you, Anne, it sounds like you're saying that the elementary school teachers can do this successfully, sorry, the elementary school principals, but our expectation would be the same for the high school as well. Mm -hmm. okay. they, they have some things that are in development because one of the big shifts when I did the ENDS report last year was getting away from subjective measures and getting into objective measures. Um, and so they have some data that's, that's very objective. They have some in terms of their performance in terms of within the schools um, that they'll be putting into place this year. They have the interim assessments that I've demanded that they, they use. They've been given a mandatory um, schedule um, for when they have to do that, uh, as well as their own formative assessments. So they'll be in the first year of using that. The elementary schools are in the second year. So there will be differences between what you see. Yeah, just because of where they are involved in the work. Well, what's the name of the standardized test that the state of the market has? The SPAC? SPAC. And then they have their own which developed science test that we've never seen the results from. Which which one is where where is that one reported? SPAC? Um SPAC is will be part of that big overview I do in October will do. October? Yeah. Right. Yeah, so I reinterpreted the ends and I have all these measures for for the interpretation and that'll touch on a lot of that. Okay. So can I just I just want to understand the process a little bit. So you do an ends report by pulling out the data that you're and that's going to change over time. Together. Yeah. So that but then we then ask the administrators to then show it in more detail. So is that so there's an end goal here. Okay, so we reinterpreted the ends last year. There are some devices, some measurement tools that they still have to create and develop. There are some that they're using for the first time this year. The goal at the end of this in about two or three years, and I think it's in, in the EL report, um, is to get it to the point where 
it is the faculty themselves that are collecting this data, right? They've kind of taken a look at my interpretation, they're reinterpreting it to fit their best knowledge of their subject. They're creating their own or using an off-the-shelf um, assessment tool, depending upon what's the best fit for them. And it's their job to be able to pull that data together. And hopefully in three years, they're presenting in front of you and not me. And the reason for that is because if they're sitting down as a group and they're looking at it together, that is a professional learning community. They're going to know what their weaknesses are. They're intuitively going to know when they see those weaknesses in the data, what it is that they need to do and what it is that they need to focus on. And that becomes what they as a department do. We look at our data, we see where the kids are strong and where they're weak. Where they're weak, we either decide that it's something we can fix internally and we come out with a map of how we're going to do it, or if it's something they can't fix internally, they use that information to come to me and say, this is going to inform your budget. We need this, this, and this. And so we're trying to flip things around so that the budget, which really controls everything, um, it's coming from bottom up instead of top down because it's been top down for, for, for a long time. Um, but it's going to take a couple of years of that transition. So that's the path that we are on. Um, it will take two or three years to get there. So you had me coming up with your initial interpretation because there was a requirement that I report on the ends, right? right. Um, but we are in the process of engaging in the work so that it is, it is the actual academic departments, especially on those foundational knowledge ends, that will be doing that work. That's the goal. How will we know that the tools they use that they develop are, are actually testing what we need to know? So the, there's a huge uh, preamble. Because there'll be a bias, right? Like, yeah. I teach this, this is what I want to test on. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why I did this long preamble in the, the ends about validity and uh, objectivity. Um, it won't pass muster with me if it's not. Um, so remember, in the ends report, they have to he has to push his people to interpret and give a rationale for why am I using this assessment? What, what data or what professional uh, sort of opinion have I turned to, to to figure out that this is the best tool yeah, so, so to do it? So objective means he'll be helping them. With that. Yeah, objective yeah. means you know your report card data doesn't fly. Right. Um, SBAT, that's a good that's a good measure. Um, there's half a dozen um, really solid uh, tools that they have out there. They're using Track My Progress right now that's tied to the Common Core. Um, it's, it's standardized. Um, it's the same for every kid that takes it. And it's tied to the exact knowledge that they are supposed to be learning. Yeah, they're supposed to learn more than that, but the exact minimum um, knowledge that they're supposed to learn. And so those things would be acceptable. Um, in some cases, like social studies, uh, the fine arts, they don't necessarily have an exam out there um, that may be conducive. They may have to develop their own. Um, and I can That's what I worry about, the developing their own. Um, there, are, there are some national tools like foreign language. There's the nat national foreign language exams in each area, which is a good tool. Um, you've got the AP testing um, that goes on. Um, you can use old, old exams from AP testing. Um, but also, um, I'm pretty skilled with, with testing methodologies. If they're developing things on their own, I can guide them. If not, I can get a facilitator when we can. Uh, but the, the big focus right now, especially at the high school, it's math and ELA. Um, the, the, the goal is I want these enrollments to continue to increase. The best way to do that is to get those scores up. If those scores go up, people will move into town because they want to take advantage of a, of a good, good school system. And all of a sudden, you get this beautiful positive feedback loop going. More people are coming that, that are highly pa passionate about education. Because of that, we get more support in the schools. And it just keeps feeding itself in the um, But yeah, so, yeah you guys are hitting on the good, the good stuff. Um, so what's your timeline to your, um, each of your departments to complete that um, overview and monitoring. I mean, what's your expectation? So then we can have an expectation of you. Yeah. So the it's uh, in the in the ends report. It's been modified a little bit. There was only one of me to go around with all the HR function that I performed in the last two years. Um, so we've got the special education team that is completely up and running. Um, we've got the math department that is almost there. Um, as part of the other work that I was doing in terms of curriculum, you also have a digital literacy curriculum that is going into place in the fall um, that the librarians developed, which meets your information technology. Um, and um, 
we'll talk a little bit about it later, um, you have three people that are coming in to help me with this work. You now have a K-12 ELA director who will be working with the humanities, English, and, and social studies on that. So I'm able to hand that off to somebody who's incredibly capable and talented. And you now have a K-12 math um, person to do the same. Um, so they will be following up and will be helping and assisting with that work. Um, I guess that's not, my question is, the timeline. So school starts in less than a month. So are we meeting with the teachers and letting them know, or your your chairs of your departments, and they report out to you what's the frequency? I guess what I'm curious. So the 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 goal in the end, once everybody is up to speed, and the high school actually did quite a bit of work across the departments, Katie actually led it to get it started. Um, the goal is it's yearly. Uh, the testing reports come out yearly. Uh, the report to the board is this is our progress between last year and this year. This is our three-year trend. Uh, this is how we're doing. Uh, they've also been given some other um, demands the principals had, and that'll be communicated to the staff on the first day. There are two thresholds for them. Um, first threshold is 50% um, on SBAC, ELA, and math. Um, the way that test is structured, right, it fits kids basically to a bell curve on the, the scaled scores. So the majority of the people should be clustered right in and around the 50% mark, right? It's just the, the test, they, they do an average of everybody that took it. Um, the average is, is the middle. That's where everybody ends up being clustered. Um, so 50%, if they're not 50% across the board, they can expect me to come in and I will give them some dictates that they have to follow. Um, the overall goal is 70%. Um, given our resources, given the, the, the talent and the quality of, of staff that we have, um, 70 percent is, is easily doable um, with a little bit of work they've got to have an aligned curriculum and people have to be following it and the biggest thing is people have to take the testing seriously when it comes up um, 70 percent uh, will put us in the, the top tier in the state um, it's 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 achievable because this particular school is already doing it in the LA as of this year so we're, we're kind of on our way the high school high school is the one that's the most work on most people but you will get that every year. And it's also, it's the important work that the, 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 the teachers do. They've got that, that year-end kind of summative data that, that guides the trends over time. But they're also doing these interim assessments during the course of the year, uh, the smaller little assessments. And that's to kind of give feedback into their professional learning groups is that, hey, you know, we just got done teaching, you know, these four standards. The kids did the interim assessment. They did really well. You know, we can move on. Or, hey, we just did the interim assessment. The kids are missing, got some gaps here, and those gaps are too important for us to move on until we go back and we teach you this and something else. So that's the, the process that's in place for next year. So you said the high school is where we need the most work. Mm -hmm. Where are they right now? You, know, you said that you told them that you want them to be at 50, and our goal is to be at 70. Yeah. Where are they now? They are where they have traditionally been, um, with the exception of ELA, which is on the rise. Math has been problematic, and you'll get all the numbers in um, in October. Um, reason being uh, has been the seventh grade math curriculum, not curriculum, the people. You've had two very poor teachers that are no longer here, one after the other. Last year, we had an amazing teacher who went out on maternity leave and the sub that we were able to get was not good. So it's, it's, it's unclear with the math. They actually do, at this point in time, seem to have a pretty good curriculum. The failure isn't the, necessarily the curriculum or what they're teaching. It's been in the quality of the individuals that we've had. We have a superstar um, in uh, this year, um, Tim Moynihan, who's also going to be doing the new robotics program, the new robotics uh, classes that we've had in the place. Um, so that should solve that. But that's one of the things that's a little bit different when you've got smaller schools. Um, and you have one person teaching a whole grade. If they're not up to par, it's, it suffers. And the problem with math is if you get a year, year or two of that, it carries on, right? It's a foundational subject. And so how are you remediating those kids that have been in the seventh grade the last couple of years? So part of the discussion um, with Elijah, and I gave uh, Elijah and Katie, we had a lot of, a lot of kind of deep talks. Um, was this idea that you know that you have kids that are out there that don't have the skills they need to be successful in the next class in line. The expectation is 
is that you will take the amount of time required um, that those students are spending in math class next year and you will increase it. How will you increase it? Well, you now have the tools to figure out what the gaps are in the kids' knowledge. You've got Track My Progress, you've got the interim assessments. You identify what they're missing, you sit down with the math teachers, and you talk with them about, okay, based on the gaps you're seeing, how much additional time are they going to need to fill in those gaps? You increase the time, you front load what they're weak on, right? Because they can't learn what's new until they've got this. You get that teaching done, and then you move into the new curriculum um, for this year. And so that's the rule for this year in terms of what you're doing. Um, you also have another uh, powerhouse person. I've, I've got three top-notch people, um, and that was the, the, the I don't even know what the exact title is, but the director for Tier 2 and Tier 3 supports. Um, so Doreen Dorfman is one of our new new people that is coming in. And her job is literally to go through the records of every kid, figure out what they need, what their gaps are, and connect them and make sure that they are attending to the half a dozen different programs for remediation that they have at the high school with those gaps for them. Um, she's also overseeing um, the 504 process as well as, as a part of that. Um, so the structure is there um, as of this year. It will take, take a year to really kick off, but you should see some pretty drastic improvements by the end of this year and um, next year results. If the state ever gets this year's results done, which is going to be all year. So a lot of it's been structured lately. Can we um, return to the annual agenda? Is there anything else that we need to change or amend before um, this uh, yeah, becomes the, a final draft? Plan and staff appreciation. Yeah, um, we discussed uh, getting rid of that and making it so on the teacher's appreciation day, it would be that. So we just need to do the plan it the month before to okay. do the cards and everything. And what day is that? April, right? I thought it was April, so March would be... Um, okay. So it started in March. Yeah, it would just be one month. It would be the in March we have to bring the cards. Okay. So we can sign it and then decide who could be available. And then I think it's in April is uh, the teacher appreciation. I don't have a uh, connection. I got, I got the note. Although I guess it could be a holiday. Mm -hmm. Teacher yeah. appreciation. Yeah. Is there anything else that anyone sees that is um, something to, to change? Going to the board's attention? Okay, so Lane, you've made notes, or who is who? Yep. I've got it. We'll sit down tomorrow okay. morning and so we'll we'll approve this next month then. We'll review it and approve it. Um, okay, next up, negotiation teams, meeting times and strategies. Can you believe this again? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do you have to say about that? So um, last year was fairly simple, even though you know some of the negotiations got a little bit protracted. Reason being was because it was a one-year contract, uh, given everything that's going on with the state trying to negotiate the, the, the health insurance for, for the, the, the teachers. Um, next year, uh, assuming, and we'll talk a little bit later on in the incidentals about where the things that are standing in terms of the health care. Next year, it's going to be very important that we're on our game, because um, we have the opportunity um, you know, to do a three-year contract. With them. There were a lot of language changes in terms of duties and assignments and, and, and work that uh, they're currently kind of required to do that they were looking to change. Um, so I have a feeling it's going to be a very kind of protracted process. Um, what would be ideal um, is for, you know, reaffirm who's on each of the teams. Um, and then to kind of plan out uh, some strategic sessions. We could meet a half hour before the board meetings just to go over strategy. Uh, we could meet a half hour before the actual um, negotiation meetings as well. Um, but one of the things that I've, I've talked with uh, the union about um, early last year is this idea is that we need to get back to actually bargaining in good faith. Um, good faith means that if you want something, you get something in return. Um, the big piece uh, this year is this idea of, of value-added strategy. Um, 
what they are doing currently this year under the contracts you know, is basically the same as what they're doing next year. There is no added value um, for the district in terms of that. So they have a right to get paid the same as what they received in, a, in, in the previous year with the addition of a, of a cost of living increase, right, which is usually, you know, this year it's about 2%. If they want more than that 2%, Given the fact that they are highly compensated, probably the highest compensated for this area, if they want more than that 2%, good faith bargaining means that, okay, um, fine, if you want 5 and 6 and 10% like you're asking, these are the additional things that we want you to do for the district um, to be commensurate with what you're asking for. That's going to be a tough pill for them to swallow, um, being that they are used to coming in asking for everything off the top, it's just the union strategy, without ever offering anything in return. Um, but that's why I think it's so important for these strategy sessions and, and to, to get a group of people that are, that are committed um, and have the availability, because I know it's, it's tough on some of those timelines to be there, that if, if we go in as a unified front, which is what the union does, and basically says, yeah, we hear you, um, but this is how the game is going to be played, um, unless we go with that unified thought, we, we won't be able to change this. Uh, and there are a lot of things that they're we're asking for that were over the top, and it's hard to tell when they negotiate that way what they're really committed to and what is just the gamesmanship of trying to start high and work their way low. Well. I mean, they always end up at three percent. Um, so instead of you know playing that game, let's let's change it around. Now, be, being new on the, the committee, how does the, the logistics of it work? You know, us as board members, do we just come, kind of come as your backup and you negotiate, or do we? Patreon negotiates, our yeah. lawyer. Yeah. So we're just at the there for? Yeah, I am, for. I am, and, and to, to, to instruct Pietro. I mean, right. you, you, you are the negotiating body. I'm also just there for advice and, and counsel based upon, you know, if they're presenting something, you know, to say, yeah, it's a good idea, oh, no, these are the potential problems for it. Um, but that would be, I think that's a strategy that the board as a whole has to decide, is what capacity do you want me uh, interacting. Uh, I can lead it. Um, but the problem is, is that, as people have pointed out, is that if I'm the one that's in doing the negotiations with them, if it's stuff they don't like, now there's bad luck. And it started to happen uh, this last meeting. They started to get kind of touchy. Um, I, I don't know if it became bad blood, but it was kind of. Yeah. They're looking at. They're looking. Oh, it's all his fault that we're not his, getting what his, we want. His. And we don't want that. No, because he has to deal with them. Right. Either. Right. And they have to have trust and faith. I don't mind um, playing that role, um, but it, again, you know, there's there's two sides to it as well. I mean, if if, if there's bad blood coming out of it at the end. It's going to make it real difficult um, just to manage the daily operations and, and, and the resources part of the job. So, as an example of this past year, Lane kind of uh, before the meetings ever happened, he came up with these are the several things that I'm looking to to get out of this negotiation. Some language changes, uh, what monies he was thinking that we should fall in between, like a kind of a guideline for that. And he discussed it with with, with us, at, um, and everybody was going to go. Yeah, that's your plan. And then when we got there, the board members that were there, it was more of once we handed them their policy or our recommendation, like this is what we want to do. They gave us theirs. And when we looked at it, that on its face, we had more knowledge than Lane did because of just the fact that we had been through the negotiations prior, and we had we all right. They've always asked for this. This is something that um, may be important, but they always throw that out there, you know, with kind of the background. Yep. And then Lane was able to digest that information and, and then come up with, okay, if this is the, if these are my inputs, now I want this instead of what we did. And so we helped him make his decision, but at the end of the day, he's still, um, really, he's still making a lot of the decision. And then uh, for the money part, it was always, you know, trying to bounce off. What are we realistically? What are we going to be able to? It was good to have the. What's worth the fight? And what's yeah. Not. What's what? What's worth it? And what's not worth it? I mean, really, we're representing our communities, the right. taxpayers, right? So, 
our constituents. Mm -hmm. And you are the body, it's not, not me, you are the body that makes the final determination of, uh, in, in terms of what's good and good and right. Um, part of the strategy discussion um, goes back to what we were talking about with the faculty doing the work on the ends. Um, when, over the course of time, as this process gets better developed, when that ends information is coming up from that, right, one of the biggest tools to meet the ends is the budget. It's the biggest tool. Part of these discussions and negotiations is, hey, you know, we're not meeting the ends here, here, and here. We could if we had the teachers do this, this, and this. Those negotiations are a way to change structure so that we can meet the ends a little bit better. Um, and so it should be looked at in, in those terms. You know, where are we currently falling short? If, are there things that the teachers can do to help us get there? Okay, those are the things that we want to go after. And we're willing to give them a little extra if they're, they're willing to come to the table. And the board members being there, the teachers' representatives were definitely looking at us when they had questions, not necessarily when they, they're looking to us to answer the question. Pedro is the one who talks, but they, they're, look, they're looking straight at you going, why not this? And Pedro's, okay guys, I'm over here, I'm the negotiator, uh, that kind of thing. But they're looking to us because they know that we approve the budget. He presents the budget, we approve the budget. And so it's better to have more of us there than less because it's unified instead of looks individual when there's one person. And so it became, some of the meetings, it was just me and Lane there, and that became hard. It was, all right, Paul, we understand what your view is, but is this what the board thinks? And it was, yes, of course it is, but it's hard to say that, even yeah. though. The most powerful message that can be sent to them is, you know, if there's four of us sitting there, and when they're asking questions, you answer the first one, you answer the second one they get that feeling that you're unified and they start to realize, well, we, this gamesmanship isn't going to work. We can try it, but they, they look like they're pretty pretty solid in terms of how, what they're thinking is, so you know, we've got to try it. Yeah. I guess I felt that the support staff negotiations went well. Hmm? I felt that we were... We were given more than they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. They traditionally do. Yeah, we were given them more than they wanted, but they, des they deserve it. <laughs> um, they did. They, they sure show you go very well. Usually it's one meeting, maybe two. No, right. we have like four or five. Yeah. Yeah, usually they go really, there's very, usually very few issues. So the teacher ones that become very, uh, yeah. but they, they ask for more. So I they, guess, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So then you're suggesting, because I guess I felt like when we opted to be on our teams, I didn't realize we, you would want us at the other ones. So I guess that just wasn't clear to me. No, you only have to be on the, the oh, team that you represent. Yeah. No, if you're on support staff, great. Right. So uh, if there are role. three okay. people on the uh, teachers and there's three people in the support, it would be expected that the three people are there with Lane. So it'd be yeah. four of us there. And then the support staff, the three people who are on the negotiating committee with Lane. So you need four. But we have to decide who's going to be on yes. this next month. Yes. Do we want to do that today? I would do that. We, we, we did, but I think we that, need, I think just reconfirm. Um, odds are, just for, for time frames, the, the meetings tend to be around 4.30. You know, that was new. 4.30 or 5, yeah. Yeah, 4.30 is a challenging time. It's a very challenging that's, time. That's why I bring it up. It's it's sometimes jobs don't. That was the work. issue. Mm -hmm. It was just a time. Yeah. But it's did, did somebody write down who was on what? Because I don't well, remember. we did. We, when we reorganized the board, but that was from last year, sort of. I mean, it was for because we didn't remember the whole thing. But it yeah. was, we were still in the negotiation. Yeah, right. So, we, so right. We, in my well, set, I remember volunteering, but I thought it was. But the, you already had people for. Here it is. But I can't remember who are teachers. We have Paul, Melody, and Brian. In support, we have Ann yeah, Kaplan. Rachel and Aunt Ashley. So should we have more than three people on each team then? That's fine. Three's fine. Three's fine. If someone else wants to they all show up, right? Right. On right. any well, given day. I think the if issue one person is, doesn't show up, then you're down to two. The last meeting we did, the last ones we did, normally their meetings are like this. They're at either 5.30 or 6. That's what we've always done. And this past one, it was at like 4.30 4 and 5. And it was very hard for board members to get there. And so there was an unreasonable expectation. And so I guess, if the three of like so for example, if the three of us are on the board, if we say this is the time, then that's just going to be the time. Yeah. The the teachers can either meet at that time, or we have to pick a different date and pick a different time. But 
we can't say 4.30 if we can't be there at 4.30. The teachers wanted us there at 4.30 because it was easier for them, but if we can't make it, it's just not going to happen. Saturday morning, 7.30. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody can make that. <laughs> the other, other piece, since we're on the topic, is the timeline for this. Um, the negotiations between the state and the, the teachers union aren't going well. I mean, they were never kind of expected to. Um, we may not, it's likely we're not going to have any kind of answer from them until around uh, December 15th is when they go to binding arbitration. So it may, maybe January or February before we can even get started. Is that for health care? Or is that yeah. more than that? Because part, part of it, and the support staff, their health care is, is under the same, um, th those that have it. And part of the reason you can't really negotiate too much until that happens is you don't know the impact of the cost. Right? Don't know what you can do with the other parts of the... Yeah. So that it may be delayed. It, it may not be until you know after the first of the year, um, which is, would be unfortunate because that means the entire state's going to be without a teacher's contract or an old one, perhaps. So, so what's your plan? Do we want to wait until November to name to, to iron out the team members, or do we want to commit now? Aren't those the ones These that were we decided on it after the you know reorganization in March. So teacher negotiation is Paul, Melody, and Brian, and support staff is you, Ann, Rachel, and Ashley. I would just um, once so. Dan Howard decided she can't leave them, so and I'd rather not. I mean, they're all set with me. I'm. Yeah, yeah, if you guys five on that. Yeah, it depends on the time and the day. Because yeah. now I like I work, and if it's like I, I work until five, yeah. and then also now I have to I have to arrange for childcare depending on the day. So because I don't have it's just me, and so I that just the challenge of yeah. when it is and what time. Is uh, how long is the travel time? Is like six thirty? Well, no, it, it would only take me half an hour, but it also depends if I have my daughter yeah. that night, then right. I would have to make arrangements for childcare. And so I think last time the issue was we didn't take any of that into consideration. Yeah. The teacher simply said, these are the dates we're available, this is the time we want to do it, and we said, okay, we'll work it out. And then uh, it was either we made it or didn't make it. And I think this time all we got to do is take that into account. So they yeah. say these are the several, what they usually do is say these are the several dates that were available. And we'll just and tell them 6.30? Yeah, or yeah, whatever it works. 6 o'clock is fine. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, if we can make it later, in the, if it could be like a Thursday or Friday, Okay. Yeah. Once the first Friday, Monday, and Tuesday, then. Yeah, those are definitely better days for me, too. So, is everyone happy with their assignments? Sure yeah. that I knew what I was. Okay. <laughs> that would be great. Um, and then we'll just yep. you know, be very committed to um, supporting um, the board um, in these negotiations, and that would be really helpful for me, too. The, the question I have about the strategies part there. I think the strategies is probably more all of us than less just the three people that are on the mm -hmm. committee because I think it's the strategy behind it all is kind of the more important part. So as an example, uh, we're willing to go here but not here. That That's probably a board decision and not those three yeah. people. And so I, I, I'm wondering when do we want to, you, you mentioned meeting earlier or later. It, it's obviously any kind of strategy stuff, it's uh, executive session. Yep. So I'm um, just wondering when do we... I would think in, in terms of what may be easiest is, you know, if 6 o'clock is doable. You know, 6 o'clock before the board meetings, you know, the, the, that those committees get together, we talk about it, and then we can go right into executive session and continue the conversation. But do we all want to have a general consensus on the strategy before then we go into the... Yeah, that's, that's what I mean is before we, like, so... We're, we're willing... Paul, Paul's making a very good point because often boards do this when they're hiring. They will leave the, you know, signing the contract. They'll they'll delegate the power to the superintendent to do that. But they will say, okay, you can hire this individual, this principal, but their salary has to be between eighty-five right. and ninety-five thousand. So you guys, as a as a board, what Paul and Paul's got a very good idea is that okay, between you know this percentage and this percentage is acceptable. And as long as you guys stay within that range as a negotiating team, then everyone's going to be okay. Can we just add it to an executive session as we lead up to it? Right. That makes sense. Yeah. And not with the additional meeting. Right. Just, right. Just add it as a regular board meeting. Executive. Okay. Right. And as it gets closer, we'll, we'll know 
how the state is doing and sort of when yeah. we begin. Yeah. It's very hard to be the three of us to come up with a number to represent all of yeah. us. Yeah, <laughs> it, depends on, it depends on what you're asking for, too. Yeah. 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 We can come up with numbers. Yeah, we can come up with numbers. Is it going to make everybody happy? I don't know. <laughs> Make us happy. Yeah, we made it. Okay, next on our agenda is the um, policy review. So this was um, the report that was issued by Sue um, in June. It is right after the agenda, so this is the next thing that's there. Um, you can see, you know, there were a number of things she suggested we do. Um, <laughs> and so, you know. She suggested, as I said earlier, that we have a subcommittee that is willing to meet with her, um, and she will meet us here and there. So, I would, you know, are there anyone who would be interested or willing to do this? Rachel? Yeah. Anyone else? Hopefully, I'll I don't have to do it by myself. No, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll commit to doing that, too. I can do it, but, I, but it's going to depend on scheduling, like how quickly it needs to be done because of the big event I'm doing right now in the hospital. Okay. So, um, when, one more yes. when are, uh, this would be in September, okay. probably, late September. Um, and we would meet at the OSSD office in the upstairs room. Okay. Um, she's willing to do that. And I'm happy to be there if you guys okay. want me. Yeah. So, great. I think that's enough. Um, the four of us can do that. And um, generally, Early mornings or evenings? What, what's your, your guys' preference? Or late afternoon? I have to check with her how available she's going to be. It depends entirely on the day. Okay. For me. Uh -huh. I mean, but either I work for a month, I would completely off the other, okay. the rest of the month. So if it's a day I'm off, it doesn't matter what time. If it's okay. a day I'm working, it depends on what shift. Just I would love early mornings. Like, I like that idea. Like a 7.38? Yeah, I'd be fine with me if it's a day I'm off. Okay. Um, I'll see. I can and then, you know, I'll suggest a few dates to do, sure. and then we'll figure that out. Okay, right. Um, RTCC meeting dates, traditionally, um, as you see on the agenda, so that in the last, I don't know, 10 years or something like that, we've had September, November, February, and May meetings. Um, so it's proposed, and Jason's uh, glad to to do that at six, so that means next meeting, September, um, will be a 6 p.m. meeting. Um, we'll start with RTCC. Jason will, will let the other school districts know. Sometimes, usually the VSAC person is there. Yeah. And sometimes a, another um, you know, school representative from Northfield or... Who? Or Stacy? No, Stacy. Stacy, short. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so usually there's a person or two um, who, will, who will come as well. So I think that meeting's where are we next time? Randolph. September Randolph. Randolph. Okay, perfect. So we'll start with that. Um, with Jason. All right, uh, Lane, your um, you have two policies. Yeah, two policies that you two EL reports that you submitted. Yeah. Both. This is first reading. So, and, and I probably start with a little bit of a kind of a, a general um, conversation, just as reminders, especially because we've got some new board members. Um, we did a little bit of change with the report with Val Gardner. Um, one of the, I think it was last summer, um, we had some discussions about what the report should look like. Where it's possible and pertinent, I'm trying to just you know, do the quotes, do the, put the evidence right in the report. Um, in some cases, like in terms of the global constraints, which we'll talk about in just a minute, there is still a notebook um, in my office that has further evidence in there. Um, so if people are, are ever interested, you just call up Linda, say, hey, I'd like to see the, you know, the book for EL2 2.0 or EL2.8, if there's other evidence that will also be in that book. And then the other piece that's important as part of the, I think the board's oversight role, is that if there's you don't feel there's enough evidence or there's other other evidence that as a totality as a total board that you feel should be in there you just ask um, the, this process the way that that you have developed it is really good because you've got the review right that's happening now and this would be the time to say hey you know we'd really like to see this this and this as well and that way I can pre present that if, if additional is needed if the board feels it's needed at the next next meeting 
Um, EL 2.0 is the global constraint. Um, it's, it's a very short one, but it's basically stating that, you know, I'm not going to allow unethical or illegal practices to happen um, within the district. Um, the way that you do that um, is ensuring that the organization is behaving properly. And because an organization is really made up of people, it's making sure that the people within the organization are behaving properly. So the bulleted list that's in there is um, kind of talks a little bit about the HR functions that, that were carried out by, by central office this year. Um, and then based upon you know the interpretation that's there, this, this policy is in compliance. Um, so questions on those numbers typical? The number of investigations? They're high from again, I'm coming from Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. There were some HR issues that had been long standing that hadn't been managed. And so some of that is that. Uh, mm -hmm. That's been, been true for the last two years. Hopefully that has we'll passed. See. I think we've gotten through most of that. It's so maybe next time we review this it'll be you know, Yep. That's the goal. But as I say in the EL report, um, one of the things that's nice is you see all that work that was done, you didn't get any grievances about it. Mm -hmm. So it meant that, you know, and that's a pretty good indication that we were just and fair about what we were doing. Um, so you know, as a central office, we were hopefully also in compliance with. Other thoughts? Okay. Um, Anything you want to add about the 2.8? 2.8 um, is actually one of the longer ones. Um, there's a financial uh, executive limitations that's about as long. Uh, but that one, communication and board support, it's really just making sure the board's receiving the information um, that you need to do your job well, right? so that you're able to make informed decision. Um, a couple of things that I threw in there just for consideration, um, just ideas, um, was under Provision 7 um, is about ensuring the board has a work, workable mechanism for communication. Um, two of the things that I'm going to suggest is um, everyone has an OSSD email. Um, a couple of reasons for that is that um, most of the things that are happening and being discussed are can be called up in terms of public records. And this way, everything that you guys are sending back and forth that may have to do with, with board stuff um, is on our servers and it's preserved for their required seven years. Um, the other thing, too, is that if you're talking with folks in the community, you may not want to give them your personal email. Um, it's nice to be able to separate the personal um, from, you know, the work that you're doing uh, on the board. Would that have, would there be any liability or, or issues when you send us a mm -hmm. confidential email about some sort of thing they, going on at the school that is confidential? They, they would still have the right to request it under public records. Um, regardless of you know which email address that I send it to, um, the only difference is is that well, actually there is no difference. It would still you know if somebody made the request, we send it past legal to say hey, is this something that they're allowed to have? Um, in each case, sometimes what will happen um, is that if you're using a personal email account for some of this stuff, if a per, if a records request goes out, you don't want them also being able to get access to your personal stuff that you're sending. But sometimes there's some entanglement that can happen. Um, so those are the reasons for that suggestion. The other possibility is we've got the Chromebooks that all the students use. Um, you know, if, if folks were interested, you know, we could give every board member a Chromebook and then do as much electronically so we don't have all the big paper shuffle. Um, I don't know how people feel. Maybe for the meetings? For the meetings. Okay. But you just you take it with you, use it as your main piece of communication. The other nice thing about it is that you'll have every file that the board could ever possibly want or need. So if you have to look something up, it's right there. If somebody asks, asks a question, um, you can Google it. That's that's a, that's one of the biggest fun. If I was saying that I'm a very digital guy, I would yep. love that. Because I use, for most of my meetings at, at Norwich, I use my phone. Yes. I have my drive on here. Yep. And I find it so much easier no, if um, I, if I have, than this. This is nice, but it's... you got to flip look and at you can do a quick search. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's valuable, plus it saves the trees. Um, and you can carry, you carry it all with you. So, but those are those are decisions that you recommendations, but decisions you as a board would have to. Have to so. um, policy twelve was about. So this is enumeration twelve under there. 
allow the board to be uninformed of required policies and where to find them. It was that executive limitation that was the impetus for the policy review. That's the reason we're going back and looking over um, the policies. It should happen every three to five years uh, because the state mandates, the federal law, state laws change so quickly. That's generally the reason that you, you got to Got to, got to update that. So my, my suggestion is every three years. So every three years, I'll be making that suggestion to the board to do that. But that was just the impetus for it. So I guess there's other questions or comments. So I'll approve these next time. Okay. All right. Um, next is the consent agenda. Uh, we'll approve them all as a slate. Um, first is the minutes from the OSSD meeting in June, which were closed. If anyone had any uh, changes or corrections to those minutes, please let us know. Can we to accept the minutes? Okay. We're going to do it all as consent. Well, we're we're gonna gonna do it all. So we'll do it all. Yes, yeah, so okay. we'll do all three of these. The next was the uh, professional staff contracts. Um, there was a list that was enclosed. I'd like to tell you there's one person I forgot on that list, and that's Harriet Hart. She's a 50% preschool teacher for the new preschool program. That was the, somehow I left her off the list, but she's on the list that you have for us on. Right. So there's a contract list for new hires on, included in our packet. There's also a support staff CBA, um, which was enclosed. So that was the results of the negotiations with the support staff. Um, so it was, we kind of came back to the board, uh, voted to reopen negotiations with them. Um, we came back, reached an, a tentative agreement um, with them. Um, it's all salary, there were no other changes to the, the language. Uh, they were, especially some categories of the support staff were hideously underpaid relative to the comparables. Um, so just out of decency, um, as well as the fact that the executive limitations require it, we had to get them up to um, the comparables. So I did the, the big analysis of where the comparables were, right? If this is the comparable range, this actually puts them towards the top of that so that, that we're competitive now. Hopefully it's going to solve some of the problems that we've had uh, retaining custodial staff in the place. Um, overall, it restructured the hiring grid, the salaries that they start at. Um, got most of the starting um, hourly starting salaries up to close to $15 an hour, which will probably be the minimum um, wage at some some point in time in the near future. Um, but it also did the people that were off that that hiring grid. It gave them a 4.1 uh, percent increase, so whichever was greater. So either they were adjusted because of the hiring grid, or they got that 4.1 percent increase. Um, so they are in in pretty good shape at this point in time. They are at the high end of the comparables um, across the board. Some of the language changes on everything. Yeah. Any other questions about the support staff? Okay, now I'll take a mo motion to approve the consent agenda as a whole. So moved. Second? I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The consent agenda is approved. Next is uh, reports and incidental information. We've got the superintendent's report. Is there anything you want to add or elaborate on, Lee? Unless there's questions. Um, a lot of it was about facilities. Um, to talk a little bit about the Raven project. Um, mm -hmm. Talked a lot also about the um, issues with the boys and King in terms of the painting um, are in there in case case folks have questions. Uh, uh, half a dozen incidentals are going beyond. Um, but, major part of the work was in all of the facilities work that was done across the schools this year. And then there were reports from RTCC and from the elementary um, administrators. There was not a report from the high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, financial report, uh, do you want to talk to us about that at all? Yeah, um, actually this was a little late getting the folks too because it was the year of end closeout. Um, Things are actually in very good shape. I mean, there's there's parts and pieces if, if folks have questions. But basically, um, as far as the district as a whole, um, the surplus at the end of this year is $549,000. Um, a lot of that is um, reimbursement as it is um, most years. 
In other words, we have um, students with special needs that we have to provide services for uh, that we know we're going to get reimbursed at the end of the year for, but we have to put it in the budget to be able to pay the services as they're rendered and then we get reimbursed. A bigger chunk of it was actually the kids from school choice uh, because they're paying you know seventeen thousand dollars for tuition to come here. Our enrollments have been, been shooting up. I expect them to go up again this year based upon the preliminary numbers. How does the increased number of, of seniors make up for the lack of students not attending RUHS? You know, doing fast or CCD or other things. Has, a, has, an, has an impact on our what we call our ADM, our average daily membership. And that's what the state uses to determine, you know, how much money we're getting from the state. We get ten thousand three hundred per kid from the state. For so it does have an impact. Yeah. Um, but still, even considering that, our our enrollment yeah, we is. We were up like fifty kids last year. Even and then we're up at least. Uh, I think it's primarily at the elementary level with the preliminary numbers. We're up at least another twenty this year. So I'll have better numbers that that gets firmed up around October 1st at this time for you know, which kids didn't actually show up for school for the first day because it's time to weed it out. Um, but we're the enrollment goal is this is happening um, in a good way. Um, in terms of the technical center, um, and this is something I've got to discuss a little bit with Robin. Um, they have a surplus as well. Um, as long as that surplus doesn't exceed three percent. Um, of the monies that they get that's based on their, their daily enrollment, um, we can keep it. If it's above that, we have to give the excess back to the sending schools. Um, so they have about a $50,000 surplus um, that is coming in from this operating year, um, which is good. So we're in the black in both schools. Um, what's interesting in terms of looking at things is that the technical center has been getting a small surplus every year for a long time. They actually have half a million sitting there uh, from all the little surpl surpluses. Um, and so we're going to do some investigation about um, what that can be used for, how it can be accessed. Um, one of the things it's going to be used for is to um, cover the, uh, we talked about it a, a while back, um, we have the need under state law to have an assistant director for adult ed. Um, but there's no adult ed anymore because the adult ed that the state put in right in the building downtown, you know, has, has taken all of our students. We still have to pay for that position. Um, so it's a, it's a problem with the law. Um, what we've done is we've minimized the cost of doing that. We're down to about $3,900 a year, but we still have to pay. Um, but um, that had been happening for a number of years even before I came. So they had built up a, a debt of about $50,000. Um, so we're going to use this money to so that that's covered because you're not allowed to let that grow for more than two years. Right. And that had been growing for a while. Problem. We, we checked with the other tech centers around the state to see what they're doing. Um, what they have been doing is they've been using their tuition money to actually pay for that, which is illegal. Um, you're not allowed to use tuition money to cover this. Because this money is surplus and it's been carried over from one year to the next, it doesn't fall under the category of tuition funds. So are we... Are we um doing any kind of advocacy to try and get this rule or law change? I have spoken to folks, but remember it affects seven right. buildings around the state. Yeah. Seven. Um, so it's you know it's not going to be a high priority for anybody, but it was was brought up with the legislation. But hopefully our legislators are aware that this is, yeah. I mean, it's got to be affecting all of them and yeah. Yeah. it just should be addressed at the... Yeah, and it's a, it's, it's a quirk in the law. Because those those organizations. Well, they're always tinkering. Why why don't we get them to tinker on something that's? I was trying to tinkering. I was trying to get them to commit to a, a five year moratorium in, in, in terms of adding new mandates so that we could actually clean up the ones that we have. <laughs> right. Uh, they they did listen. They couldn't tell much by the expressions. So, <laughs> so we're we're in the, we're in the black in, in both, awesome. um, which is good. Um, other incidental pieces, there were a few. Oh, just a, a couple of fun things that I, I didn't add in. So one of the things that's been on, on folks' mind in terms of um, the high school was this, this lack of kind of STEM, um, of coding. Um, 
There are two coding classes that are going into RUHS next year. They are full um, at this point in time in terms of the students that have signed up for it. Um, we have also built a full robotics program. The students have the VEX kits. We have an online curriculum that we purchased and we have a teacher. Um, so that is happening in the fall. Um, the innovation space that's in there um, has been expanded um, so that teachers can bring their classes down. And one of the things that I'm really excited about that Betty Young, our, our K-12 math person, um, is involved in the innovation space, is we've got students that are struggling to learn the mathematics in the classroom. They are developing curricula that can be used in the innovation space to bring the kids down and actually do hands-on work. It's going to get them to the same end. Um, so that's in place for next year. Um, in terms of, you know, we've had some discussion about, you know, we've been doing a lot for the struggling learners, what are we doing for the advanced learners? We've had a lot of conversations and we generated a lot of ideas this year at the high school, especially about, you know, mathematics and, and allowing kids to advance if they're, they're able to. Um, they have put in, um, using the tools that we bought, um, the interim assessments and the track my progress, um, they've put in uh, an exam um, that, that was pretty well developed at this point in time to be able to see if the students have uh, all their eighth grade math skills down and if they do the automatic grade yeah, stuff algebra. So that is happening now this fall. Um, so we've done, done quite a bit of work. Um, we already talked about you know the, the, the power trio, um, our ELA director of mathematics and then our, our tier two and three support director. Um, Two of them are specifically there to improve curriculum and outcomes for kids. And the third, you know, Doreen, her, her work is actually filling in the gaps of the kids in this thing. Um, so the high school should be in much different shape um, at the end of next year. Um, that's it for comments Any other questions? And the student records training notification, is that for us? Yeah, so um, just like the teachers, there's training that you're mandated to have yearly. Um, it's on things like FERPA and being a mandated reporter. There's a little PowerPoint that you will be sent um, probably by September 15th, between the, the first week of September and September 15th. It's important that you go through it. There's a little quiz at the end, take the quiz, and then uh, print it out, and then that gets submitted to Laura who we can then put it on um, in, in the record books in case the state comes to look at it and say, would you guys do this? Um, so that, that will be coming out. Um, does this date? They should. <laughs> and my guess is if there's ever an issue, like if, if somebody should have reported and they didn't, that's the first thing they're going to ask. <coughs> would you guys do your job? Yeah. Making sure that people are trained. Or evaluation. Or evaluation. <laughs> Um, I thought we had a great meeting. Um, one of the things that I think we could work on this year is just um, sometimes just sort of being, figuring out a, a, exactly what it is that we want, you know, in terms of uh, the outcome of the agenda item, you know, like, because I, I think sometimes. On, on the agenda itself? Yeah, uh, well, I right. don't know about on there, but, you know. We'll, we'll, Sorry, what would sort of be? So, sort of like with, with the annual report, yep. you know, like, I like that we had some discussion about it because it allowed us to sort of talk about why we're doing what we're doing, but then you took some notes, she took some notes, but I'm like, uh, am I supposed to remember what we're supposed to be doing? So just, I don't know. I just sometimes I, I'm not clear exactly what what you're looking for for so that's why um, it was uh, uh, diversity of viewpoints were sought out and considered a lot of times that I'm like not clear exactly are we looking for an opinion or is it a lot of times it's just sort of a report out or whatever um, it would be nice if, if there was a question um, just to sort of and kind of whether uh, discussion is expected. Right. What if it's right. a report? Yeah. Is right. that information or action? Action. Right. Next, next right. Steps. Right. Yeah. That would that would just be um, something I think maybe we could sort of work on. Okay. Because um, sometimes I ask questions and I'm like, oh, I waylaid us really long <laughs> on that one. But I felt like it was a fruitful discussion, and I think I, I would. 
So just uh, looking at the current agenda, we've got um, approval of annual agenda and goals. That was a discussion one. So if we put discussed and in, in approval, would that be the right? Intent? Right, would that, maybe. Because like the, the discussed negotiation teams, we that was a discussion. Right. The review right. the policies um, was more of a review. We didn't really discuss that. Right. Discuss RTCC meeting dates. We that was a discussion. So, right. So like review OSA policy review. That's almost misleading. So I sort of spent time reading through all that, but really what the thing that we were going to do was just who so would like to be on a committee. Okay. Well, she, that, or that's she true. That we needed but to between the agenda up. meeting and today, she had asked to attend a board meeting. So right. we were oh, going to review oh, with oh, her, and then she just told me she can't. Yeah. She'd rather work with right. a subcommittee. Right. So that's true. It was, right. I thought it was going to be something different. Right, right. Yes. Because we spent a lot of time in this section, which I think was all useful. Um, but we did not, uh, in our agenda planning, we did not allow enough time for it. We should have Right, or just sort of, you that know, more. sort of, and just sort of noting what it is, the outcome that you want yeah. out of the okay. discussion or whatever. Um, just to give us a little more direction mm -hmm. so that I know that, oh, God, <laughs> sometimes I'm asking questions and maybe it's not really... I think it's always appropriate to ask questions. I don't so, think there's a time where it's not. Um, yeah, and I thought um, everybody participated, everybody listened. Um, I feel like we're pretty open, and I'm feeling like it's a more open board to just sort of asking questions and not making the assumption that everybody knows sort of exactly what was going on because we're all at different levels of experience. You did very well. Thank you. I'll second that motion. <laughs> 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 All right. All uh, right. Unless there's anything else, we're going to now enter executive session.